So it's finally happened. Windows DirectX 11 and 12 games can now be played on crossover on the Mac using Apple's game porting toolkit, including games such as Cyberpunk 2077, Diablo 4, Hogwarts Legacy, and even Overwatch 2. But this support is completely unofficial, and it certainly does not come from Apple, who intentionally placed a very restrictive license on parts of the game porting toolkit to prevent this exact scenario from ever happening. And it doesn't come from code weavers who make crossover. And that's because integrating Apple's game porting toolkit into Crossover would be breaking the terms of the licensing agreement, and you definitely don't want to be going toe to toe with Apple's legal team. This support actually comes from an amazing open source project called CX Patcher. All you need to do is to have Crossover installed and the game porting toolkit DMG mounted, and then CX Patcher will simply copy the best improvements from game porting toolkit into Crossover. And I'm not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice, but as long as we are evaluating these games and we're not distributing any of Apple's files, then I think that we have complied with the license. And the result of combining crossover with game porting toolkit is so much more than we could have imagined. So the real big draw here is that we don't need to install homebrew, we don't need command line tools, and we don't need to spend hours compiling game porting toolkit, and you won't ever have to look on the inside of a terminal window again. And secondly, crossover's graphical user interface is an absolute delight when you compare it to game porting toolkit's nightmare command line interface. Crossover makes it really easy to install launchers like Steam and Battle.net, and it's really easy to toggle settings like eSync, Retina mode, and things like the performance HUD are just off by default. Overall, it's just going to be a much better experience for the new user. And lastly, the compatibility with Crossover and Game Porting Toolkit combined is actually greater than the sum of its parts. Yes, on a simple level, adding Game Porting Toolkit into Crossover means that we get a huge amount more DirectX 12 support. However, don't underestimate the fact that Crossover also has its selection of cross ties and massively improved launcher compatibility. So when you use Steam on Crossover, there are no more of these black window login screens. And if you install the Battle on that launcher, it's really easy to relaunch this, which was a huge problem with Game Porting Toolkit. And even more games are now compatible so for example, The Ascent is a game that I tried to run on Game Porting Toolkit and it just wouldn't launch properly. However, when I run this through CX Patch Crossover with Game Porting Toolkit, this is actually working correctly. And games like Overwatch 2 will just flat out not run on Game Porting Toolkit. And on previous versions of Crossover CX Patcher, it would run, but it would stutter very heavily and the menus and user interface were basically invisible and you couldn't change it in the graphics settings because of that. However, when we add Apple's changes to Wine into Crossover, but we skip the D3D metal translation there, and instead we run the game using Crossover's latest versions of DXVK and Molten VK, and Overwatch 2 now plays with fully rendered menus and virtually no shader cache stuttering. And CX Patch Crossover is going to be a huge deal for the future of Mac gaming. That's because if you watched my last video, I raised some concerns about how Apple's free game porting toolkit would put Crossover and Code Weavers out of business, and how this would be terrible for the future of Mac gaming. And that's because if you want to use Crossover, then you need to pay for a license. And this is money well spent because it supports code weavers and every penny goes towards funding the open source wine project. This is the fundamental technology which not only powers crossover but also Apple's game porting toolkit and also Valve's Proton on the Steam Deck. And now I can definitely say that crossover with CX Patcher is far superior to just plain vanilla game porting toolkit. I can now recommend that people buy a crossover license not just because it is the definitive way to play Windows games on the Mac but also because your money helps to fund wine development and the future of Mac gaming. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be showing you the full tutorial. We're gonna install Crossover, we're gonna download the Game Porting Toolkit DMG, and I'm gonna use the CX Patcher to load Game Porting Toolkit files into Crossover. Then I'm gonna show you how to install Steam and get a DirectX 12 game running. And then we're also gonna install the Battle.net launcher, get games like Diablo 4 working, and also getting Overwatch 2 working virtually flawlessly. So a couple of things to note before we start. This is not an official officially sanctioned way of modifying crossover. These changes are not supported by code weavers, so please do not ask them for technical support. If you do need help, go to the Apple Gaming Wiki Discord. There is a dedicated CX Patcher channel there where the developers hang out. Secondly, you need to have macOS Sonoma installed. So technically, some of these games could run on macOS Ventura, but Sonoma is where you're gonna get the best game experience. Check the link in the description for my video tutorial on how to dual boot macOS Sonoma and macOS Ventura. You can also do this with without losing any of your data. So once we are logged into macOS Sonoma, what we're gonna do is to go ahead and download Crossover. So make sure to click the link at the top of the description. If you do make a purchase,
watches, it helps to support this channel and the content that I create. So after we've clicked the link in the description, what we're gonna do is just scroll down here. I'm gonna press the buy now button. And within buy now, you can enter the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New. Then you're gonna get a 20% discount off the recommended crossover plus. Press buy now and go ahead and download crossover. Or alternatively, what you can do is to press the try now button here and we can try a 14 day free trial. Just enter your name and email address and then press the download trial now button. And that's gonna go ahead and download the latest version of crossover, which at the time recording is 22.1.1. Once that's finished its download, we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop this into the applications folder and then let go. And then within applications, we're gonna go ahead and find crossover, double click. Here it's asking us if we sure wanna open it, press open. So here we can make use of the crossover free trial by pressing try now or if you bought it already press unlock with purchase info and then enter your username and password but for now we're going to use the crossover trial press try now and now we're met with the installation screen here so this data we have crossover installed and because we're using macOS Sonoma at the time recording this is in beta and if you try to use plain crossover and install steam then this is going to throw up a whole load of error messages so what we're going to do is close crossover completely and we're going to download CX patcher this will help to fix crossover on macOS Sonoma and we'll load in game porting toolkit support at the same time. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for CX Patcher. What we want to do is to download the latest release. At the time recording, this is version 0.2.15. Just go down to the assets section here and then click on cxpatcher.app.zip and then download this into your downloads folder. And if your browser warns you, just press the arrow button here and press keep. Then we're going to navigate to Finder into downloads and then double click on cxpatcher.app.zip. And then we're going to take CX Patcher here and then drag and drop this into the applications folder. And then within applications, we're going to double click on CX Patcher. It says it can't be opened. If that's the case, then just scroll down in applications, go to utilities, then double click on terminal. We're going to open up a terminal window and then we're going to type in the command xattr space dash cr space. So make sure there's a space here because we're going to drag and drop CX Patcher onto here. Press return, close this, and then we can double click on CX Patcher. And now this has opened. So next thing we're going to do is to download Game Porting Toolkit. So I'll leave a link in the description for the Apple developer website. Just go ahead and log in. And you can use any free account to access this. This is no longer locked behind a paid developer account. We'll just do a search for Game Porting Toolkit, and then we can download the DMG file here and click on this button to download the Game Porting Toolkit DMG. So once this DMG has downloaded, we're going to go into Finder, go to Download, and we're going to mount gameportingtoolkit.dmg. Press the agree button here and then make sure that this is mounted. So now we're going to go back to CX Patcher, press agree and proceed. And then what we're going to do is to click integrate external resources. I'm going to press locate external resources and then we're going to scroll down and then select game porting toolkit here and then press open. We're also going to enable repatch and upgrade. Next, we're going to go to Finder and then find our crossover app and then drag and drop this into the crossover patcher. Now it says here crossover.app has been successfully patched and now we're ready to open up crossover so double click on crossover so now that crossover has been patched with cx patcher what we're going to do now is install a game so most commonly people are going to be using steam you can also type in the word steam here and then install steam from here this is going to create a new windows 10 64-bit bottle called steam press install so this bypasses a lot of the issues that are currently on macOS sonoma beta which are probably going to get fixed in the future if this ever gets stuck, just make sure you check your dock and see if there's anything in the background that needs to be pressed. So here we're going to press yes here just to make sure that this bar continues. It's basically just installing fonts. Again, just check the background here, see if there are any other wizards to complete. Press next, next, and then install, finish. So the bar stopped here. We're going to go ahead and complete the Windows Steam setup. Press next, then next. And now we're going to click finish and it's going to start running Steam. So this is the Windows version of Steam updating. So now crossover is asking for access to the microphone. That's just normal Steam stuff. And now we can go ahead and log into Steam. So just go ahead and sign in with your Steam username and password or log in with the QR code on your app. So now we have the Windows version of Steam installed. So what you should do is to close Steam. And before you reopen it, just look at the advanced settings here. This is the DXVK flag. So basically, if you turn this on, then that means that if we run a DirectX 11 or 12 game, we are going to be using DXVK Molten VK, which is the standard crossover translation layer. However, if this is off, then we're going to be using Game Porting Toolkit for DirectX 11 and 12. And if we're using DirectX 9 and below, then we'll be using WineD3D instead. So if you want to make use of Game Porting Toolkit, make sure that this is turned off. 
So now we're going to open this and you can go ahead and download and install any Windows game. Many of them do not necessarily work. However, if you look at the game porting toolkit article on the Apple Gaming Wiki website, you're going to find a compatibility list of compatible games which are going to work. So I've downloaded the game, The Ascent, and what I'm going to do now is to press the play button and we're going to launch this game. So as you can see, the game has now launched and this is a Direct X12 game running through game porting toolkit and crossover at the same time. As you can see here, running at 1080p on ultra settings on the the M2 Ultra and this seems to be working pretty much perfectly on the Apple Silicon Mac and in this section I'm going to show you how to install Battle.net desktop so just click the install button and do a search for Battle.net and then I'm going to select the Battle.net desktop app and this is superior to the game porting toolkit command line interface because there once you successfully install Battle.net you couldn't actually launch the installed version and the only way to get back in was to restart the installer of the Battle.net desktop again However, on Crossover, this is fixed. This is all thanks to the kind of cross ties that Crossover uses and also the updates to Wine as well. So when you're installing this launcher, just watch out for any kind of background applications. Just check your dock to see if there are any windows hiding behind the Crossover window. So once all the dependencies are installed, then you're going to go ahead and log into the Battle.net launcher. Skip locating your games and then go into the main window. So in order for this launcher to be registered as installed by Crossover, we need to shut down and quit out of this first. So now what I'm going to do is to test out the game Diablo 4. However, if you try to launch this from a fresh crossover bottle, it's going to tell you that you're using an unsupported operating system. So the way we're going to fix this is by running a regedit within the battle.net bottle. And then we're going to navigate to the HK local software, Microsoft Windows NT current version folder. And then I'm going to double click on current build and changes to 19042 and change the current build number to the same value as well. And once this is done, we're going to make sure to restart the Battle.net launcher. And once we're back into the launcher, we can now easily run Diablo 4. But this is not the only game that works. We're also going to try Overwatch 2. And this requires some modifications to the patched crossover using CX Patcher. To minimize issues, what I'm going to do is to control click on the application and I'm going to paste this here so that we can make a duplicate. And once that duplicate's made, I'm going to rename this one Overwatch 2. That means that if I run this version of Crossover, it's going to be distinct from the original, so we don't confuse any of our settings because this will break a few things on the original Crossover for other games. So then we'll control click on Crossover Overwatch, show package contents, then we're going to go into contents, put this into a list, then we're going to go to shared support, Crossover, lib, wine then x86 64 and then we're going to scroll down until we find dxgi.dll and dxgi.dll orig so the original one this one here is the crossover version of dxgi this one is the one that's been patched so what i'm going to do is to swap these around so we don't want to use the patched game porting toolkit version we want to use the original crossover version instead i'm going to rename this one dptk and then i'm going to change this one back into the original dll so we're kind of partially unpatching crossover so we'll go back to to applications and then we're going to go ahead and double click on crossover overwatch 2. If it can't be open just press control click open and press open again then we're going to open up our battle.net desktop app. So one thing that you should do is to enable dxvk. So this is a bit counterintuitive we're not using game porting toolkits d3d metal to run this we are using dxvk molten vk. So double click on this if Battle.net closes, just wait for a moment, it will open like this. Now we can go ahead and go to games and we can download and install Overwatch 2. So just do that as normal. And it's actually going to be launching using DXVK Molten VK. So I made a video about Crossover and CX Patcher in the past. The big improvement with loading in Game Porting Toolkit is the fact that the menu interfaces all work correctly. So you can see all of the menu UI, change all the graphics settings that you want. That's all working correctly now. And secondly, the stuttering situation is far, far better. You don't have to cache nearly as many shaders and the game is pretty much smooth from the first load. So this is a huge improvement and just goes to show what the combination of game porting toolkits Wine plus the latest developments of Wine via Crossover plus the cutting edge versions of DXVK and Molten VK all coalesce together into making Overwatch 2 very, very playable on Apple Silicon hardware. Now it's not 100% perfect. There's still an issue where when you respawn, the mouse cursor becomes unfocused from the game. Just press Command Tab twice and then you you'll be able to take full control as normal.
So anyway, that is how you get crossover working with Game Porting Toolkit using CX Patcher. And as you can see, this is just the beginning if and when Game Porting Toolkit gets updated and crossover compatibility improves over time, we're gonna see a ton of new developments. However, this is all possible thanks to the work of CX Patcher. So if you wanna support this project, then make sure to check out GSenX's GitHub page. Dean, who is the developer, he has done a ton of work on things like the Wineskin server and also contributed a huge amount to CX Patcher. If you look at their GitHub page, you can see this big PayPal donate button, which you can click and you can go ahead and send a bit of money. Also big thanks to developer Itala Mandara, who is the creator of CX Patcher. And with the help of the developer Nas, managed to get Unreal Engine 4 games like Stray and Jedi Fallen Order, working on the Apple Silicon Mac for the very first time. And of course, one of the big reasons we're doing this is to help support code weavers and fund the future development of Wine. So if you wanna see future Windows support on the Mac, make sure you purchase your Crossover Plus or Crossover Life licenses, and you yourself can get that warm, fuzzy feeling of supporting Wine. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.